safety lady be proud of me, and I know she's listening because she wants to hear the Texas 7 story. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, exactly. The snow plows, after the snow plows have been out, they dig up the shoulders of the road. They spray gravel all over yeah. the roads, the intersections, the curves. you got to be careful of that also. Yeah. There's gravel out there, and it's... You know, it's nothing like going into a curve on two wheels and then hitting a, a big, you know, bunch of marbles. Mm-hmm. That's about what it's like. So it's a lot of fun if you can don't get <laughs> scratched up. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, just just more little tips and secrets. Want to yeah. keep everybody safe out there and have a oh. have a good riding season because this is going to be an awesome year. Yeah. I can tell. Just make sure you wear protection. Yes. Because you only have I'm kids like gonna, me. <laughs> I'm not quite, yeah, I don't know <laughs> kids like Charlie. <laughs> Some sheepskin underwear are his protection. Yeah. Anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna start off here a little Please bit do. with the Texas Seven story. I make sure it's on, man. All right, I just want to make sure so. we're recording. Yeah, because this is a once in a lifetime event for me, for you to hear this Texas right, Seven. I'm, I'm gonna set the stage, and then then we'll go do some tunes, and then we'll come back, and I'll go into the story a little more because you know it was a traumatic experience for me, Charlie. <laughs> so here we go. I worked for an outfit. Years ago, Phil and I did, and we did uh, plasma metal spraying, and we and we did it on the road. We worked on the road. And uh, we worked a lot down in Decatur at ADM, and we worked inside the boilers. We were in the combustors, uh, working off scaffoldings 80 to 130 feet in the air inside the combustors. It was a real adrenaline rush. I mean, this was a hot, dirty, dangerous job. We'd worked that job for five, six days in a row around the clock. We had two 12-hour shifts, day shift and night shift. And uh, we rented two big 24-foot rider rental trucks that we hauled the equipment in. And uh, I drove one of the trucks all the time. I was one of the drivers. And uh, I happened to be on the night shift. And uh, we finished our shift, and we went back to the motel. And I laid down, took a shower, laid down, take a nap. I knew the day shift was going to finish the job. And when they get done, they get back to the motel. Uh, supervisor cuts us loose, and we head for home. Well, that's exactly what happened. So I grabbed my gear, and it was late in the afternoon. And I go out, and I jump in the cab of a big rider truck. I fire it up, and I head out, and I hit interstate. And I'm coming up the interstate and cruising along and just jamming away. I'm going home after a hard, hard, uh, <laughs> uh, a very hard week. And uh, it starts getting dark. I'm getting kind of late. So I thought I'd stop and get something to eat. So I pull in. I believe it was El Paso down there off of Interstate yeah. 39 to McDonald's. I'd get me a quarter pounder with cheese and some fries <laughs> and get me a manila milkshake, you know. So, okay, I'm good now. And I pull back out on the interstate in the truck and I get a roll and I see a... a a squad car sitting in the in the media there and sure enough he pulls out he comes up behind me he pulls out he comes up alongside of me looks at me he drops back and he tucks right in behind the truck where i can't even hardly see him back there that's and a I'm like place. oh yeah it's like okay well see phil had been doing this for many 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 years and he says when you're in a rental truck like that especially on the interstate they will stop you just to see what you got inside that truck you know, mm-hmm. if you're drugs or whatever, blah, blah, blah. And, and they do it on the interstates a lot, you know, and it, right. it happened to him. And so I figured, okay, this is what's going on. So I'm eating my quarter pounder with cheese, <laughs> and I'm holding that rig right at 60 mile an hour, and I'm just going along pretty soon. I look back there. I see another squad car back there. Yeah, okay, so I keep going, and then pretty soon I see another squad car back there. I'm up to three. I'm like, this is good. <laughs> I'm going, you know, under these overpasses, and I'm seeing squad cars up on the overpasses. Pretty soon they come down on the on-ramps. They get back behind me. Pretty soon I'm cruising along there. I look back. I got like 10 of these guys behind me. I'm like, 10? They must be waiting. They must be waiting for the dogs. They're waiting for the canine units. You know, I'm going to get popped. They're going to go through the truck. Well, I'm clean. I know I'm clean. Right. And, uh, so I'm rolling along, and I'm waiting for this to happen. And I keep going, and I keep going. Pretty soon I see more lights back there, more lights back there. It's it's dark. All I see is headlights behind me. And uh, I'm rolling along, and I'm, I got one eye in the mirror and one eye on the road because I'm, <laughs> I'm waiting any time. You know, I was like, okay, let's get this over. I want to get home. Been a long, hard week, and this happened to be a Saturday. Well, this also happened to be the Saturday that the uh, right at the time when the Texas 7 escaped from prison down in Texas, and they killed a police officer. They robbed a gun store, so they were extremely armed and extremely dangerous, and they were on the loose, okay? Right. Well, I'm not thinking about that. now. I'm thinking about going home. <laughs> it's Saturday night. Yeah. And uh, all the rumors had said that, you know, they they thought they were heading north. You know, the, the criminals were heading north. Well, I'm not paying attention to this, so I'm cruising along. I'm cruising along. I see more cars back there. I see more cars back there. 
And all of a sudden, I seen one hit the cherries just for a second. Blip. And, I mean, he was way back there. There was nothing but headlights. And I'm like, oh, man, this is going to be good. I got no clue. <laughs> I'm thinking, oh, they're going to search the truck. They're going to turn the dogs in, you know, blah, blah, blah. Okay. And uh, I keep going. I keep going. I'm coming up into La Salle, Peru. Okay. I go past Route 71. And I look in the mirror, and I see nothing but headlights behind me. And I'm like, nobody's passing me. Nobody's going around me. I'm doing a steady 60 mile an hour. Nobody <laughs> is passing me. This is going to be good, right? Yeah. So I, I come down. I'm coming down across the Lincoln Bridge there by Oglesby, across the, across the, you know, coming up to, to Route 6. I cross the bridge, and I got to, you know, gotta, nobody's passed me. And I come up to Route 6, and there's two unmarked Mustangs. And uh, I see them on the overpass. And as soon as I go under Route 6, I see them Mustangs pull out. And down the, the on-ramp they come, and they join this herd of vehicles I have behind me. And I'm just reaching for my cell phone, right? I'm going to call Phil. I'm going to call Phil and say, hey, bro, this is going to be a good one. <laughs> 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 this is, you know, I know I'm clean. Yeah. And uh, sure enough, I get past Route 6, and all of a sudden, bang, my mirrors in that truck lit up with nothing but red and blue. It was nothing but an ocean of red and blue and Holy. bright white lights. I pull the truck over, and I hear sirens screaming, and, and the la- I couldn't believe it. It was lit up like Soldier Field. So I'm I'm like, okay, it's just, this is going to take a while to sort out. You know, yeah. I'm reaching in my wallet for my driver's license, waiting for one of them to come up alongside the truck. Not happening. <laughs> i'm like what's going on i roll the window down and i hear him over the over the loudspeaker hollering at me take the keys out of the ignition throw the key put your hands out where we can see him drop the keys out on the road so i'm like oh man i throw the keys out on the road and you know they're they're hollering at me over the bullhorn you know put your hands where we can see him open the door from the outside you know the whole works and i open the door from the outside exit the truck very very cautiously i exit the truck i get out there and they're making me dance around you know turn around hands in the air all this other stuff and I, you know of course i got a pair of sweatpants on and a you know harley shirt with skulls and stuff on it my old army you know field jacket and i'm, <laughs> I'm turning around you know it's okay maybe i do look like a criminal and as I'm turning around in the middle of Interstate 39, I'm looking around. I'm like, ain't no traffic. They got the entire interstate shut down, north and southbound. I'm like, I'm oh. out of here by myself. <laughs> and, I mean, I'd, I kept looking back. I looked back over my shoulder, and they'd holler at me to turn back around. But every time I, I looked over my shoulder, I see nothing but red and blue lights, bright white lights. I could hear dogs barking and sirens screaming. And they're hollering at me over this bullhorn. I'm like, okay, this is probably going to take a little longer than a few minutes to sort yeah. out okay so they're, they're doing the the walk backwards thing you know you need you know walk backwards three steps take three steps to your left take three more steps backwards and i kept trying to look over my shoulder i kept i wanted to see what was going on back there and they just holler at me you know turn back around oh yeah and uh they finally walked me backwards and not a out of the corners of my eyes i could start to see the squad cars and 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 believe me it is just nothing but screaming noise of sirens and dogs and and the lights and i'm like this is a buzz and i got back to where i could see him all of a sudden i felt this big old hand on top of my head and he just slammed me down to my knees right there in the interstate and they just they they were in my pockets they were screaming at me uh, how many people are in that truck? Is there anybody in the back of that truck? Who else is with you? They're, I mean, they're just screaming at me. They're giving me all these instructions, and I'm, I'm just like, hey. One question at a time. <laughs> one question at a time, please. And no, there's nobody in the truck. I am by myself. I work for this outfit. You know, we do this, and that truck's full of sandblasting equipment and metal spraying equipment, you know. <laughs> Baba, I'm from Earlville. You know? <laughs> and they're and, – uh, as I'm looking around, they had all the squad cars parked sideways, and they had all the guys all knelt down with rifles and stuff over the hoods of the and the trunk lids oh, of, the, of the squad wow. cars. Yeah, there was a bunch of them. I'm like, whoa. They had a whole bunch of them pointed at the truck. And as I looked around, Charlie, they had a whole bunch of them pointed at me. <laughs> and so a whole oh, gray beard man. here. I'm on my knees. I'm trying to explain things. And uh, they're hollering at me. And finally, the one old boy that had his hand on my head holding me down he he looks down right at my face and he says do you know why we pulled you over like this i said no sir i don't he (laughs) says we have reason to believe you're one of the texas seven and i'm surprised my lip didn't start bleeding because i was biting it hard (laughs) yeah you know it's like 
this is no time to be a smart ass. No. <laughs> it ain't happening. You're These outnumbered, guys. I think. Yeah, and they are serious. They were, uh, I use this as a pun, dead serious. Yeah. Okay, so one of them is screaming at me to cross my legs. I'm on my knees. Old gray beard, my legs, you know, okay. I crossed my ankles for him as, as they're hollering at me, and I got a cramp in my oh, right thigh. Man. A bad one. And I just I just let out a whoop, man. I said, guys, I got a cramp. I got a cramp bad. And I stuck my right foot out straight and grabbed my thigh. Oh. Uh, yeah. Oh. Shotgun about two inches away from my nose, brother. Right there. Oh. <laughs> I could see the eyes in the other end of it. And uh, whoever that officer might have been, I'd like to thank him for not pulling the trigger. Because if I was in his shoes, I probably would have. Wow. But, uh yeah, this was uh, this was the beginning. They things started to calm down a little bit. They hoisted me up, and they keep asking me about the truck and what's in the truck. Nothing in the truck. There's equipment in the truck. There's the keys laying out in the interstate. I <laughs> knock the padlock and take a look in there. Yeah. Well, they ain't about to do that. You know, they got a little barricade. And then, like I said, in the meantime, the sirens and and everything is just screaming. And uh, they handcuffed me, and they walked me back and put me in the squad car. So. Uh, and I, I'm watching all this. I'm sitting in the squad car, and I, I'm trying to smooth. They they had a uh, uh, either a county or a state uh, policeman right there, you know, at the window with me at all times, watching me. And he and he was asking me, you know, you know, you all right? And I'm like, well, you know, it's all right as I can be. <laughs> yeah, I could get home a little later, and I'm <laughs> explaining to the boss about the overtime. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting there looking around. It's like this is like cops, man. I got a front row seat. And I'm watching all these guys are all knelt down there with all the rifles and guns and everything pointed at the truck and all the lights shining on it and everything. And I'm like, no, I'm trying to remember if I haven't put the damn thing in gear. I'm thinking if that thing moves a little bit, they're going to turn it into Swiss cheese. Oh, <laughs> ouch. Oh, uh, yeah. Part one. Mr. Wizard in handcuffs. One of the Texas seven. But uh, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> It's more to it. <laughs> There's a lot more to it. I'll give you more details coming uh, coming back. We're going to take a break, but you know what? It happens to me because I am the wizard.